Good morning, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming out. Uh, we're just going to jump in with questions. If you have one for Yarmo, please raise your hand. Uh, we'll get you a mic. Uh, for the few of you who have joined via Zoom, uh, we'll take a few questions if there's time at the end. So with that, I'll give you Yarmo. Hey, Yarmo. Um, you had know, mentioned uh, that the wins and losses maybe from this season wouldn't really be factored into the decision uh, evaluation of Brad Larson. I guess I'm wondering with, I think it's 563 man games lost, a franchise record, how tough was it to come to the decision that you guys reached and, and was it based off of mostly just this season or was it kind of like a, a big picture thing through the two years? Well, first of all, I want to clarify that I said that it's the evaluation shouldn't be just about wins and losses. It's uh, obvious what we went through with the injuries and, and, and it's an unfortunate situation for all of us. And um, you know, we, we do our evaluation every day here. We watch every practice. We watch uh, closely, try to watch closely what's going on in the locker room and, and, and we're communicating with the coaches every day and, and that's um, how we do our evaluations on, 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 on what goes on with our team and and especially the direction we want to take with our team and we came to the conclusion that that this was uh, absolutely a necessary change that we needed to make and um, that's that's why we're here today was it difficult? it's always difficult you you're dealing with people that that um, you've gotten to know very well we have a lot of respect for Brad Larson and many legacy as, as people and and um, you know there's a personal relationship there too, and, and that makes it always hard. Yarmo, what was the criteria that you used? Why, why was this move necessary? What did you see that you didn't like? Uh, I'm not going to dissect the, um, the uh, strengths and weaknesses of, of our coaches uh, that got let go today, uh, out of respect for them. But um, as I said, it was a, it was a, a lot of things that, that um, factored in that uh, made us come to this conclusion and, and uh, it was absolutely necessary to make these moves. Do you feel like from the time that you hired uh, Larson two years ago, has, has your team changed as what this team looks like and what kind of coach it needs? Has that changed? Or is there something in, in, in the coaching specifically you didn't like? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I think the team is evolving. Obviously, young guys are getting a little bit older, and, and um, you know that's part of the process that we knew that it's going to take a little bit of time here to uh, to nourish the talent that we have and get to the next level. I think we, um, as I mentioned once before, that maybe we got a little bit ahead of ourselves last year with the success that we had. We knew this was, this was going to take time if we want to do it the right way. Um, so um, you know, all those all those things factor in, and, and uh, but like I said. We evaluate the day-to-day day -day stuff every day here, and uh, that, that uh, brought us to this conclusion. The way that the season ended was not a surprise. You probably could have seen this coming for a while now. Have you started in on finding your new coach? Do you have somebody in mind? Is it the same kind of search you did a couple of years ago when you landed on, on Larson? Well, out of respect for the coach that's still in place, we, we don't start any, any searches. Uh, they have a tendency of of leaking and would create a, a bad situation if, if we were to do that. So we, we have not, but we will start um, evaluating that situation immediately uh, with, uh, with the um, deep look at all the best candidates that may be available and, and uh, give consideration to the staff that we have here. The, 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 um, you know, the rest of the, the coaches are in place. They've done a good job and, and um, you know, we evaluate this whole situation as we move forward here and and um, you know, that starts today. Can you speak, so you've retained Pascal and Steve, uh, can you, do you want them to be part of the next coaching staff or will that be the next coach's uh, imperative to decide that if they're not, one of them isn't the, the guy? Well, well, I think that needs to be a discussion with the, uh, w when the choice comes of, of who, the, who the head coach is. And uh, as I said, that we give consideration to the people we have here internally. We always have. Um, and, um, but it needs to be a, a discussion as an organization once the decision is made that what the whole staff will look like. Go ahead, Dave. Brad seemed pretty despondent when he came in last night. I'm just curious when he learned of his fate and uh, how that conversation went. 
Uh, this morning, he um, he and I had a conversation this morning early, and and uh, it's never a pleasant conversation, obviously, and and um, I, I didn't see his press conference, so I can't speak to that. Okay. Yeah. Aaron, your your goaltending situation, obviously, a, a, for any team, it's a it's a huge deal going into any season. You got uh, Elvis signed up for another four. How, just how important is it to to fix? You know, whatever issues he had this year, he, he struggled with some inconsistencies, injuries, things like that. And did that factor maybe just getting a new voice type of thing into uh, the decision with Manny? Well, number one, goaltender is, is a key of, of, of to success with any team that wants to be in the playoffs or have success in the playoffs, or let alone win the Stanley Cup. You need, you need a goalie that has the skills, that has the talent, but also a goalie who uh, is consistent, reliable, so that means staying healthy, being in top condition, probably the best condition guy on the whole team because of the, the requirements of that job. And um, that's going to be something that's going to be addressed uh, as, you know, as soon as we get to these discussions with the players that we've already started. Yomero, how, how soon do you need a head coach in place? I don't think we're going to rush into anything. Uh, the sooner the better, obviously. But um, I think we're going to do a thorough search. I think that's going to take a little bit of time to see what happens around the league, as we've seen some things have over already happened. And I uh, would uh, maybe broaden our search or, or candidates. And uh, once we uh, get a full picture of that, then um, I think we'll uh, try to come to conclusion as soon as possible. Back to Hedge. Yeah. Um, Yarmo, it, it obviously uh, Elvis and Manny Legacy both have a, a very close relationship. I think they were close before what happened with Matisse Klevlenix, but that also kind of made them even closer. Did that was that did that make it kind of a, a tough decision at all, or, or do you like you're gonna have to have a conversation with Elvis right about this move and that kind of thing? Well, we're all professionals here, and I, I think we all have a job to do. And once you come through the doors to the um, to the rink. That's that's needs to be your focus, and and if you if you have personal relationships outside the uh, the the business part, then um, you know that's up to you, and, and and needs to stay out of the business side of it, which is being a professional athlete and, and conducting yourself as one. So um, you know it's um, that's that's all that factored into this uh, decision. Yarmo, it's such a young team that you have. Do you feel like there's an opportunity to be able to try to get the most out of development? Just how crucial is that aspect going to be when you find your next coach? It's huge. Uh, but we also have great uh, development coaching staff in place led by Rick Nash and Derek Dorsett. It's part of it, Yar Karutu in, in Europe and Nicholas Backstrom with the goalies and Brad Thiessen um, with the Monsters. Um, so... You know, we take the development part very seriously. We've always said that we need to be a draft and develop team. That's how we're going to build our core. That's how we're going to find it. But then we need to develop it, nourish it, and get them to the next level. And that 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 part we take very very seriously. Uh, we were the first team to hire a full time skills coach in uh, Kenny McCudden in the whole NHL uh, for that same reason, so that that these guys have access to uh, to a person who who takes their personal development and and. You know, into his heart and, and works with him every day before in practice. After practice, you see Kenny McCutton out there. The development doesn't stop when they get to the NHL. That was the reason why we hired Kenny. He needs to continue and, and, and be present every day. And, and um, Kenny's great at it. We have a ton of respect for him. The players have a ton of respect for him. So the development part's huge. And, and, and of, of course, the, uh, the culture that the head coach sets on that, that's, that's important too. When did you come to the conclusion that you needed to fire Brad? And did you, was that then a matter of just riding out the season and letting it finish off? I, I don't want to get into any, any of the timeline of our decisions. We informed them this morning, and, and um, decisions made. Hey, have you talked to Elvis specifically about legacy not being back? Uh, not yet, but we will. And uh, the players knew before anybody else uh, after the decision was made and, and the uh, message delivered to Brad Lars. With 47 guys that played a game for your team this year, has, have there been some guys that have kind of gotten your attention and you got some maybe some tougher decisions to make moving forward? 
tough decisions are great if, if guys are pushing pushing us to believe that they can be more than maybe even we uh, projected those those are great things I think some of the young guys on our team have taken the opportunity and and taken advantage of it you know to mention guys like Ken Johnson Kirill Marchenko who didn't start the year with us um, those, those guys have proved to us that they can be really good players on this level and have great potential to be to be even much better and, and be a part of a and core of, of a winning team. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of young talent here that's going to need its time to, to get to a level where we can compete for the Stanley Cup, but it's all part of the process. And, and uh, we're, we're, we're very um, hands-on with that process where we, we want to get those guys to the next level. And that's part of that development process that we talked about earlier. How disappointed are you in that the Monsters did not make the playoffs? Obviously, injuries had a lot to do with that. And is there anything maybe you want to do forward you know, in the future to make sure that they're stronger? Yeah, stay healthy. Uh, if we stay healthy here, we don't have to take half of their team here. You know, they were doing great before this started with our team. And, and you know, they were top of their division doing, doing great. And then once we took half of their team, and then they have to take half of their team from East Coast League, then... The unfortunate thing happened, and and um, you know most of their guys stayed here all year because of that. And um, I told Clark, he, uh, Chris Clark, the you know, our director of player personnel and the GM in in Cleveland, that I'm sorry, you know, we, we screwed you. And um, but that's that's the way it goes when when you have injuries in the NHL level, it rolls down to the American League level and so forth. And and um, not much we can do about it now. It's unfortunate. Just wondering, did your evaluation uh, of the coaching staff, particularly Brad, go right down to the last couple games? And did any of his decisions in those games factor in? As I said, I don't want to get into the timeline of this decision. We evaluate him every day, so it's not like this is a spur of the moment thing after last game or anything like that. But um, you know, this this was the right timing in, in our minds, and, and that's why we did it this morning. You mentioned uh, Ken Johnson, Kirill Marchenko starting July 1. Obviously, they're eligible for an extension. How high is that on your list of priorities heading into the summer? We, we have a whole list of priorities that we want to get into, and, and uh, we've always dealt with the, the player contracts in a way that uh, when, when the um, extension is uh, earned and deserved, we're going to get right at it. They're obviously both uh, you know, restricted free agents, so I've always said it that the those negotiations are usually a little bit different than, than when the guys get close to the UFA years and, and have that potential to test the market. They can they can be a little bit more difficult, and um, we'll we'll get to them in due time and uh, with with respect to what they've done in this league and what they deserve, and I'm sure that they will get done at, at the right time. With your coaching position, you went from a really big personality, Tortorella, to a player, or to a coach who I think commanded respect, but had more of a more of a players' coach type feel to him. Do you need do Do you have players in that room that need a firmer voice? Is that an imperative in the next coach? Is it more of a maybe closer to the previous than 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 Larson was. We need a change. That became clear that we need a change in 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 how we go about our things on a day to day basis. And how we're moving forward, the type of hockey we want to play um, in the future, and what's going to take us to the next level and back into the playoffs and and uh, be a competing team for the uh, Stanley Cup. I guess along those lines, uh, I know it's <laughs> really early to look at, at next season uh, right now, but uh, going into this off season, you got the draft, you got free agency, and all that. And um, how are you going to approach this off season? When it comes to next season, do you do you feel like if you stay healthy, there's there's talent obviously talent here that that you guys can have a big rebound next year? Absolutely, I think once we get everybody healthy, I even the, the guys that are here, we're going to look like a completely different team. But there's going to be some changes too. We're we're, we're going to look at every position and um, and we're going to make the necessary changes. We want to get back into the playoffs. Uh, we've had enough of 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 um, being, being on the outside looking in and watching the playoffs 
on TV. We were there. We got a taste of it for, for a few years in a row and uh, not enough taste of success. We want to get back in there. And, and, and the reason why we've, we did this reset or whatever you want to call it um, is, is to do it the right way to get to the next level and to be able to compete for the Stanley Cup. And we, we, we need to get there soon and we need to improve in all areas to get there. Yeah, among the injuries that your team had to go through was the goaltending situation. Well, can you provide a, an update on Daniil Tarasov? And is there any concern next year that he might not be ready for a full-time role? Well, I, I think the same applies to uh, him that I, I said. You know, we think that he, have, uh, he has the uh, potential to be a number one goalie in this league. But in order to be a number one goalie, the criteria that I mentioned before is, is not just to have the talent and the skill to play the position, but you also have to be reliable and, and consistent and you have to be in, in top conditioning uh, in order to do those things. And, uh, you know, same applies to all of our goalies. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a hard job. It's the hardest job on the team. Um, and, um, you know, it, it needs to be approached as one, too. And, and that's something that we're going to address as well. Yeah, well they, they say a GM only gets to fire so many coaches before the pressure turns to them. This is three for you since you've been here 10 years. How much pressure does this put now? How do you, you count three? Changed? I'm sorry? How do you count three? Well, Richards to Tortorella, Tortorella. Tortorella was not fired. OK, you've changed coaches three times now. Mutually agreed. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Either way, so you've changed coaches three times now. How much yeah. pressure does this put now on, on you? I, I am willing to take all the pressure that's out there. I take full responsibility on, on hiring the coaches. I didn't hire Todd Richards. Um, I had a great working relationship with him and he was a good coach for us. We needed a change at the time we made it. Um, Tortorella was a very successful coach here for a long time. Um, after a while, we mutually agreed that we, we, we needed to part ways. And uh, so this is the second firing if, if I'm counting. And um, you know, I, I take full responsibility for hiring all the, uh, the, uh, the two coaches that I've hired so far and, and for the team that's on the ice. That's my responsibility. I, I own up to that every day in front of the mirror, and I will in the future as well. Um, I'd say in 10 years, if you've gone through three coaches, that, that should be uh, pretty low on the, on the level of, of change that happens in this league. But uh, I, don't, I don't really keep statistics of that. I focus on our team and, and what we need and what's the right thing for our group and, and that's that's why we came to this conclusion at this time. Um, the way this league is set up with the draft and the draft lottery and all that stuff um, puts your team sometimes when you're in the position you guys were in, in a weird position. Players are never going to try and lose, we know that. Um, but like losing that Pittsburgh game, uh, it he prevented you from having the best odds of winning the draft lottery, obviously, like I said, would be the way to put it. What was the disappointment level? Is there a disappointment level that that, that, that didn't happen, that you didn't get the 25.5% chance to get Connor Bedard? Well, there's still a 74.5% chance that you don't get it. Um, so, as you said, players will never tank. Player, players have professional pride. They go on the ice to win the game, to do their best. Their careers are on the line. Their, their um, jobs are on the line for, for our team next year. They want to go out and do their best. As you saw with the guys that played some of their first NHL games with us, they're going and give it, giving it their everything to, to try to give us their best showing on the individual level and, and as a team. And, uh, and that's, you know, you let the chips fall and, and, and see where we end up. Now now we got the second best odds in the lottery and, and um, that guarantees us at least the top four pick in the draft. And those those things are pretty much out of our control as, as management. The, the coaches are coaching the team to win and, and players are, are there to uh, show what they can do to have a great career in the NHL. Time for a couple more here and then I'll turn it to Zoom. You talk about culture, and everybody talks about culture. But to you, what does a good culture look like? A good culture looks like the standard of work that we do here every day, whether it's on and off the ice with the, with the players, coaching staff, the management. That that um, you know the standard's always here. You know, everybody has a little bit of bad day here and there, 
but the standard can never drop to un under a certain level and, and it stays consistent and uh, it stays firm and there are a, a strong set of values within the organizations that you never compromise and um, if you live by those values every day consistently and, and, and your judge is in the mirror then I think you're doing the right things as an individual and, and, and as part of the good culture. Thanks, Todd. Um, Yarmo, obviously you mentioned not wanting to rush into this. The, the, the draft lottery is May 8th. Is there a possibility that the result of that lottery affects how you make this decision on, on who's going to be your next coach? I don't know if that would be the, uh, the deciding factor. I think if, if the decision's not made by then, it's, um, it's something that uh, factors into what kind of team we have here next year. And, um, you know, uh, those, those, all those things go into the, uh, the process of, of evaluating um, the next head coach and who it should be and what, what it should require. Steve, do you have another one? Go ahead. No, I'm good, Todd. Thank you. Okay, next we'll go to Elaine Shercliffe. Go ahead, Elaine. Hi. Um, knowing that the Jackets prefer having the same system up in uh, Columbus and in Cleveland, does this um, coaching change affect Cleveland at all, or do you have full confidence that Trent Vogel Huber and the staff down there can assimilate to whatever system the new coach would throw at them? Absolutely, that's how it's been done for years here. That the uh, we have the uh, communication between the coaching staff here and the coaching staff in Cleveland, and and um, we we try to play the same way, so that the players that come up from Cleveland to here know the system already, uh, don't need to adapt to to what we do up here, and it's been smooth. Um, in the recent years, and that's uh, how we uh, plan to continue. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.